Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this cool stack animation in Blender 4.1 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So it's finally time for an upgrade on my MacBook so I can make better videos for you. So this is why I need a new laptop. My MacBook has 8 GPU core, and that is not much. So this is my request for you guys to help me save for a new one. And it's completely free for you. Just watch the whole video, like my videos, and that's it. So in this video, I'm going to use my all-time soda can. But you can use your own model to this animation, of course. When I edited this tutorial, I saw I had just reached 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube, so thank you all for the support I get, and for you who will follow me. You can now download my 3D soda can model for free. Link in the description. So first start with set up the blend file. So before I start with this video, I will say this tutorial is inspired by Melvin 3D. I will link his YouTube channel in the description. So let's get rid of the default stuff. So press A to select all, then press X to delete it. So if you are using my free 3D model soda can, I'll show you how to import that model. Go to the file and click on append. Then find your downloaded file and click on that. Click on the object. Select the blender soda can and click on append. Then press S plus 0.65 to scale it down. Then press Ctrl plus A to apply the scale. Then press Z to switch between the different shading modes, and then select Render Mode. And like you see, I made a cool Blender label texture for our soda can, so you can play around with different animations and be a better 3D artist. So now let's set up the Blender can. Go to Edit Mode by hitting the Tab button. So this is the Tab button just right over the Caps Lock. Then press Z to change between the shading modes and click on Solid. So now we are going to change the origin point to a corner of the Blender can. And then press Ctrl plus 7 on your numpad to get to the bottom view. So select this vertex. Then press Shift plus S to snap it and select Cursor to select it. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to Edit, then click on Preferences. Go to Input and then check Emulate Numpad. Then go to Object Mode by hitting the Tab button. Then right-click and click on Set Origin and Select Origin to 3D Cursor. And now we have the origin point where we want it to be. Then press Shift plus D to duplicate and press Z to move it down on the Z axis. And then press F2 to rename it to Blender 2. And for Mac users like me, press Fn plus F2. Make sure you have the Blender Can 2 selected. Then go back to Edit Mode by pressing the Tab button. Then click here to change to Edge Selector Mode. Then select this edge and press Option or Alt to select the whole edge circle, just like this. Then press Shift plus D to duplicate. And then press P to separate and click on Selection. Then tab back to Object Mode. And this circle will sit on top of the Blender can. Now we are going to turn this circle into a curve. But before we do that, rename it to Curve 1. And the right click and click on Convert to and click on the curve. So now select your first Blender can. Go to Constraints. And then add a Follow Path constraint. Then drag and drop the curve into the target. And as you see, nothing has happened. So what we are going to do is check the Follow Curve. And then select your curve. Then tab into Edit Mode to make it into a curve, then tab back to Object Mode. And like you see, the Blender can move to this weird position, and I don't know why it's doing that. So just move it to the right place by pressing G. So I'm going to speed up this process, but continue to move it so it looks better. And don't worry, I will give you the rotation and location later on. It will come on the chapter, Animate Soda Can. So I will give you a few seconds to just move the first Blender Can, and then change the offset number to see if it looks good. And when you are happy with the result, let's step to the next part. So before we are going to add the third Blender Can, select the curve, then the second Blender Can, and the color of the object we selected will look like this. Then press Ctrl plus P to parent to, and then click on Object. And why are we doing this? Just because it will be easier to move things later on. And because the first Blender can move along the second Blender can. Select the second Blender can. Then tab into Edit Mode and change the origin point to the top of the Blender can. Then press Shift plus D to duplicate and press Z to move it down on the Z axis. And then rename it to Blender 3 and tab into Edit Mode and do the same process we did for the Blender Can 2. Select this curve, then press Shift plus D to duplicate, then press P to separate, and then click on Selection. Then tab back to Object Mode, 
and then rename it to Curve 2. I also want to say I made a collection for the curves, but you don't need to do that if you don't want to. That is just because you will see and find the curves easier. To make a collection, press M, and then right-click and convert that to a curve. Then select our second blender can. Then add a follow path. Then drag and drop the curve 2 into the target. And then check the follow curve. Then make sure you have the curve 2 selected. And then tab in and out to edit mode. And like you see, the blender can move to this weird position. And I don't know why it's doing that. So just move it to the right place by pressing G. So I'm going to speed up this process, but continue to move it so it looks better. And don't worry, I will give you the rotation and location later on. It will come on the chapter, Animate Soda Can. So I will give you a few seconds to move the second blender can. Then select the curve 2 and then the blender can 3. And the color of the object we selected will look like this. And press Ctrl plus P to parent 2 and click on Object. And now when you select the third blender can. And then change the Z rotation. And like you see, the other cans rotate along and are just as we want them to be. Good, let's move to the next part. And now let's do the fun stuff and animate the soda can. So first start with changing the end frame to 70. So before we are animating the blender cans, I will go through all the cans rotation and locations. So let's start with the third blender can. I will share the exact settings for the video such as rotation, location settings, and so on. Also, I will share some of my blender secrets. So if you are not a member yet, Go and be that so you can be a better 3D artist. That will help me and the YouTube channel. So thank you all. Make sure you are on frame one and then right click over the Z rotation and insert a single keyframe. And this little orange thing is a keyframe. And then go to frame 70. And on the Z rotation type in plus 180. And then right click and insert a single keyframe. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar. And this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So select the second blender can. Then make sure you are on frame 1. Then change the offset to something like this. And then press I over the numbers to insert a keyframe. Then hide the object from rendering and press I to make a keyframe. And now go to frame 10. Then change the offset to something like this. We want it to go to the opposite rotation from Blender 3. And then press I over the numbers and then unhide the object from rendering and press I to make a keyframe. And then go to frame 35. Then change the offset to something like this. And then press I over the numbers and then go to frame 70. Then change the offset to something like this. We want it to go to the opposite rotation from Blender 3. Then press I to insert a keyframe. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And now for the last but also the first blender can. So select the first blender can. Then make sure you are on frame 1. And then change the offset to something like this. Then press I to insert a keyframe. Then unhide the object from rendering. And press I to insert a keyframe. And now go to frame 25. And press I over the rendering to make another keyframe. And then go to frame 40. And then unhide the object from rendering. And then press I to insert a keyframe. Then go to frame 60. Then change the offset to something like this. We want it to go to the opposite rotation from Blender 3. Then press I to insert a keyframe. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So let's doing the fun stuff and animate the camera. So press Shift plus A to add a camera. And then go to the camera settings. And then change the focal length to 80 millimeters. And then press 0 on your numpad to get to the camera view. And then change the Y location to minus 25. And then unfold the viewport display. And then change the passpart 2 to 0 0.8 so it shows a little bit of the viewport. And then unfold the composition guide. And then check the thirds and center for some guidelines. And then go to frame 1. And change the Z location to minus 7. Then right-click and insert a single keyframe, and then go to frame 55, and change the Z location to minus 0.33. Then right-click and insert a single keyframe. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And now, we are going to set up the scene stuff. So start with press Shift plus A to add a plane. Then press S plus 5 to scale it by 5. Then press R plus X plus 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. Go to edit mode by hitting the tab button. And then press S plus X to scale it on the X axis. And then change the X location to 0 so we center the plane. 
and then go to frame one. Go to edit mode by hitting the tab button and then click on vertex selector. And then select these two vertices and then press E plus Y to extrude on the Y axis. And then tab back to object mode. And then press G plus Z to move it down on the Z axis. Press one on your numpad to get to the front view. And then change the Y location to six and then tab back to edit mode. And then press S plus X to scale it on the X axis. And then select these two vertices and then press Control plus B to make a bevel. And here on the left corner, you can see how much I bevel and all the settings. And then tab back to object mode. And then right click and click on Shade Smooth. Then rename it to BG, which is a shortening for background. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. We need to fix the background a little, so let's do that. So let's play the animation again by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks very good. So now let's set up the lights, and for a light setup, go and be a YouTube member. Also, I will share some of my Blender secrets. So if you are not a member yet, go and be that so you can be a better 3D artist. That will help me and the YouTube channel. So thank you all. So I'm rending in cycles. So go to the render settings and change the render engine to cycles. And if you have a GPU device, go and change to that for better rendering. And change the noise threshold to 0.1 so you can render faster. Also change the max samples on the render to 300. Then unfold the color management and change the look to high contrast. And then go to the output selection. So I like to render my videos in 4K, so the number for that is 3840 and then 2160, and change the frame rate to 30. So to make a video of this, we need to change the file format to FFmpeg video, and then unfold the encoding, and change the container to MPEG4, and change the output quality to high quality. And then press Ctrl plus B and drag over the camera view to only render the things we see in the camera view. Now let's set up the HDRI. So go to World. Click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. Click on Open and choose you HDRI image. In the description, I linked the HDRI I used. So download that. So let's set up the background material. Open a new window. By holding your mouse over here until this symbol shows up, then drag the new window that way you will until the new window show up. Then click here and change the editor type to shader editor. Then press N to unhide the sidebar. So click on new and then rename it to BG Blender. And then add a color ramp node. And then plug the color into the base color. And then change the black color to something orange. But if you want to use the same hex I use, the hex is E87D0D. And then change the white color to something orange red ish. But if you want to use the same hex I use, the hex is FF3900. And then click on plus to add another color. And then change the last seven to a two instead. And then add a gradient texture node. And then plug the fac into the fac on the color ramp. And change to quadratic sphere. And then press Ctrl plus T to enable the node wrangler. So this is how enable the node wrangler. Go to edit, then preference. Click Add On, then go to Search and type in Node Wrangler. Check the Node Wrangler, and here you go. And change the X location to minus 0.6. And then change the Z location to minus 0.1. And then change all the scale to 1.2. And here we have a cool background material. And are you ready for the result? 1, 2, 3. And here is my results. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like my tutorial. And if you do a video of this animation, go and publish that on Instagram and tag me, amalin.mpeg4. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.